Hi, I'm Okira Banks. Welcome to the Style Lounge. Get comfortable. Here we are, 2018, the start of a new year, and for us in the entertainment industry, it's the onslaught on award season. Just wrapped Golden Globes, yay, Oprah. Next, Image Awards, SAG Awards, Grammys, Oscars, and so many I barely can keep up. Our guest is an amazing actor and leading man. You know him from Avatar, Jumping the Broom, Fast and Furious, Southland, Breakout Kings, Mysteries of Laura, Detroit, and so much more. Let's talk movies, TV, music, and his latest venture, Drinks with Laz. You're adding mixologist to your resume. You know, uh, how you doing, first of all? Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you oh, for Kara. coming. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kara. Welcome thanks. to the Style Lounge, oh, I'm Laz so happy Alonzo. to be in the Style Lounge. I, uh, I, I planned out my, my outfit last night. <laughs> I set it out like, you know, the day, like your first day of school uh-huh. where you put it on the bed and you just got to mix and match, make sure it's right because mm. I knew you were going to be looking. Nervous. Yeah, I, and I was, did. Palms were sweating coming out the <laughs> garage today. I was like, all right. She going to say we'll something. We'll see what she going to say. Well, that's good. Lord. But before we get started then, I have to ask you, what what are you wearing? I'm wearing uh, G-Star. Mm. I like the way G-Star fits, you know, my lower quarters of my body I from the waist down i like they, g-star from the waist up yeah oh really i'm a medium I'm, I'm i'm a waist down kind of g-star guy i'm mm-hmm. not really feeling the waist up stuff yeah and then you know for me i just really buy what is comfortable and what fits my build mm-hmm. um i have really long arms i have a wide back mm-hmm. and a short torso mm-hmm. so it's really hard to find shirts that fit uh athletically shaped you know men Mm. Mostly black men, you know, when we have these conversations. They all have an athletic belt. Yeah, because I'm a 17-inch neck, mm-hmm. 36 and a half inch sleeve. Mm-hmm. So usually those shirts... I'm going to keep that comment to myself that I was about to say. Usually those shirts come with a very big midsection. Like well, They you think you have, have a big do. stomach. Well, you need to tailor or you have to do designers. You got to tailor or do designers, mm-hmm. right. So there are very few stores where you can find off-the-rack stuff that are, you know, form that are form, slim fitting, mm-hmm. um, but that accommodate those measurements. Right. So <clears throat> I think you're more off the rack than what you think you are. I just think you haven't found the right designers to play in. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Usually, though, it's funny because um, with dress shirts, mm-hmm. for, for my sizes to be off the rack, you're not paying less than $300 a, a shirt. That's about right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I do know one or two designers that make shirts off the rack for Who's me that, that instantly, um, I got to think. I, I have them written down Did on my phone. And know. I know and I know where they're at. I got to go to Saks. Oh, okay. You know. The, yeah. the, I, Ted Baker may be good for you, too. I haven't. I, Ted Baker's good for guys with long arms. Really? Yeah. And slim. Bit. Slim. Yep. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that's the thing is, you know, when, when, when you have that athletic build, Unless you get it custom made, mm-hmm. you know, which you know, you know, I have a few custom made suits, suits and shirts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's rough. It's rough out here. It's for not that rough. You just don't like shopping that much. Eh, so. No, nah, I don't. You're right. <laughs> I only go shopping when I absolutely have to. Mm. And, then I, it, and then it's a job. Then it's a job. Told him he need to let me help him. If I can stay out of the He's mall. scared of me, though. If I can stay out of the mall. Because you remind me of my mom. <laughs> See, this is how my mom uh, gives me advice. <laughs> she oh. starts off. By completely destroying I what do, I'm currently doing. I do not destroy She's going to criticize me first and then give me the advice. I and, do not And destroy. that's Okara's style no, of, it's all of helping love. you out. She's like, okay, I'm going to help you out because, you know, I really care about you, Laz. And, you know, your look is so important to your brand. It is. Now, because currently your look is horrible, <laughs> but I can work with you. I, I can I can do some things with you. It's like, okay, thank you, Okara. That's Please, not, bless me. But bless look, me. but do I not, if I've said something off, have I not replaced it with something? Oh, no, you you are you you know your stuff. Thank you. You're good. You All know right. what she says is on point. Thank you. Um, Y'all but you know that. you you just gotta get through that first section. <laughs> <laughs> that what, first section look, is if, the rough section. If I care about you, I tell you the truth. Right. If I don't, I just be like, you good. Right. That's how you know you care. <laughs> yeah. If okay. I care, right, I'll take it. I'll All right. Take it. So take my. I mean, care. nobody cares more than your mom, and that's how my mom. That's gives how me your her. mom but does so, it. So okay, there it mom, is. There although it is. you're not gonna hear this, you know someone else has his back. Shout out the mom. Many of us know you started on Wall Street. Mm-hmm. From Wall Street to acting, how was that transition? 
it was a long transition, actually. People don't realize that it, it wasn't just like a, you know, oh, I think I'm going to be an actor, mm -hmm. and boom, you just jump in and you're starring in films. I mean, it was uh, well over seven years of trying and failing and trying and failing mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe trying and getting a little bit, you're getting a small role here or mm -hmm. a commercial there. and You know, a lot of times when, when I considered, you know, is this the right decision? Like, did I make the right choice? Should I be going back to my previous career, then something big would come up and, and keep hope alive, Faith. so to speak. Yeah, exactly. It's like that little twinkle. Exactly. Yeah. And and I find that, you know, uh, this career is is like that. It ebbs and flows. It's, you have great periods and then you have slow periods. And, you know, what keeps you going is, is you have to constantly believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And reinventing is important, too. You know... I heard Master P say something about just being in the industry or any industry or even when you are in control of how you move as an actor, uh, entrepreneur, individual. And he said everybody has moments, mm -hmm. you know, where you have to sit back and um, revisit everything because when you're hot, you're hot. Mm -hmm. And then when it's kind of cool, you know, you got to you got to, you know, shift things around or just re shift how you move until your next Thing or whatever yeah. you create and that's real in any I think in any type of career even when you're transitioning going into the next thing yeah my old agent would always say listen he comes and goes but talent doesn't hey. if you have talent that's there to stay you just have to you know weather the storm mm -hmm. and eventually boom and it always worked out exactly because that longevity people there's a lot of hot things that are cooling off yeah I could say you know I started in 2001 really taking this business seriously mm -hmm. You know, so it's 2018. You know, so well you you're I'm, you're, I'm pretty, you're staple. You're solid. I'm, I'm I'm pretty happy with you know the way things have worked out. But uh, you know, I would be lying if I said that you know I don't still fight. Mm -hmm. You know, you still got to fight for what you want. It's not like people are just throwing things at you and mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'm just gonna turn down these next five rolls. Nah, like you, you, you know, when you see something, you want absolutely 100. Yeah. percent Oh wow. Yeah. So then that leads me to ask you: Have you um, had that? favorite acting role you know that's a that's a really good question because people always ask me what what was your favorite mm -hmm. you know job and, and I've, i haven't I you haven't found it yet it's you not that i haven't it? found it it's that every I mean, single it. job i've loved mm -hmm. you know i could pick a couple but i ain't gonna mention them that's that I good didn't love don't, don't. as much <laughs> i'm gonna say as much you know because it's was funny, it like, in the beginning those you, projects nah you know what it is is it's some bless oh. you in some ways and some bless you in other ways you know some have blessed me financially you know, others have blessed me creatively. I know one. Um, and there are some that have blessed me in both, ways. in both ways. You yeah. know, so, um, you know, you you can't. You, you know how they say, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, some things you just have to be like, you know what? It may not be something that I'm crazy about right now, but right. thank you God for the ability. Oh, to I know all about that. Take care of my mom and you know pay the bills and yeah. you know I mean we you know. It, it's a great job. It's a great job, right. right? So you know, we're always looking for that job that does both. Mm -hmm. You know, but but that's the gift. That right. That's the that that's what now we're in the era of creating. You know, just as how you created this podcast yeah. and everything that you create, and you know, like now we have the opportunity where we can uh, take control of our own. The industry is mm -hmm. so open to to creators. You mm -hmm. know, and all you need is that first one. That's it. You, know, you need that first one. Once you get that first one, then other things open up. You're right. Like doing this open up so many other doors that I didn't even think about. 100%. Yeah. So 100%. it's like, I can't talk about it now, but it's like dope. Right. Yeah. But it would not, those other doors were there. They were always there. They were always there. But until you knocked on them. Well, I had to come out of my comfort zone because this wasn't, right. I was like, oh, I'm not talking you're, to you're anybody. You're a very else. private person. I'm very private. You like private. to be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You don't like being in front of cameras. <laughs> but once you were, now those other doors were waiting for to be, to, they now were I'm ready, Laz. There you go. Here Why you go. not? Now I'm ready. Honey. Hey, sign the check. Yes. Sign the check. <laughs> so, okay. My producer. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't put it off on your producer. It really is. Don't like, put it off on your look, producer. Look, no. Mm -hmm. Look at her. I already like, know. Don't tell I her. already know what it is. Okay, going. I'm Go ahead. look. I'm gonna work it out real nice for you. Go ahead. Do you get tired of being asked, or "Are you dating?" Yeah, it it becomes uh, the main topic. Like no matter what I'm promoting, eventually it gets back to that. I was like, I don't ask questions that I don't like being asked. Right. Yeah, no. Nah. So, you know what I mean? 100%. Mm -hmm. I mean, it. you know, it comes with the territory. Yeah. You know, your fans want to know. People mm -hmm. want to know. So, it's not an offensive question. But, um, 
you know, when I, when I have been dating, mm -hmm. usually I don't disclose. Right. You know, when I'm not dating, you know, there's nothing really to talk, talk about. about. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for me, uh, I'm a very, very private person when it comes to dating in this business because I feel like when you let, you know, like for example, I have 300,000 followers on Twitter, uh, around the same, three and some change on Instagram. Uh, I'm up in the close to half a million on Facebook. When you let that many strangers into your home and into your personal life, when you're ready to kick them out, it's kind of hard to get all mm -hmm. those people out. You know, and you look yeah. at, you know, a lot of these celebrities, because now the, 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 the fashionable thing is the whole power couple thing. I don't, well. Everybody's I, posting as mm -hmm. couples and couples workouts and vacations. You know, look, because you know. And we do this and we do that. I'm naive. So it. he was like, that's trending. I was like, no, that's it's the not. New thing. Yeah, no, that's the he new thing. He was like, well, everybody you know, oh, is married. I was like, no, I know people who, they, well, they are married. Yeah, so no. I know people who are solid in it or been in it the, for a long it, time. You know, you know so. it, it's, like, it's like promotion mm -hmm. also has like. Uh, fads and phases and now we're going through a couple's phase well that's you know? not cute but to me I feel like <laughs> when you do that when you do that you're opening your home up for criticism mm -hmm. you know and you got to be careful who you let in your home like you're not just gonna let anybody in your home oh you know I know all about you know it. what I'm saying yeah so but you're essentially doing that you know mm -hmm. you're letting millions of people in and then when y'all have a problem guess what now you get mad when they have an opinion who you got to blame but yourself? You let them in. Well, when things were good, you didn't mind them well, saying, y'all so that? cute, <laughs> y'all are goals, and all this other stuff. But now... Well, what about chill. the married couples? Because I see a lot of married couples. Yeah. That's you got cool. Megan and Devon. You got Oprah with her honey bear now, which right. he's a rock. Well, he's like, been around forever. But yeah, Stedman's 31 been years. Around forever. But look how many jokes Stedman has had to endure. Well, but Stedman but, was a punchline at but, the barbershop but look, for years. But Oprah had his back. So you got to get you a, a, a uh, ride Oprah. or die. Oprah had his I back. I mean, Oprah ain't married. She's but, still a man. No, I'm kidding. You know what? Well, <laughs> well you don't know that. I'll be, I'll be first man at the White House. <laughs> um, nah, but you know, you're right. We don't know that. You don't you know. Don't know and that. there's different ways that people get married now. And after right. 10 years, you're common law anyway. That's true. That's so true. now they just got contracts to protect each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially anyway. in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be careful like, who you move in in California. Oh, I know. Right? Yeah, I've never shacked, but I You have it? Ooh, I ran away from it. Mm. They were trying. Yeah. I had I had about two. Who tried? You let somebody shack in L.A. for, I think, Three months. Than, is, it, is it three months? Yes. I heard two years. Oh, if if they are, they were two years, is right? It two yeah. years? If they're in for two years, you are pretty much married. <laughs> yeah. So you so you're kicking them out after two years, last? A, a, a year and <laughs> eleven months. Oh, she, you better be sure that's the right one. She don't know she coming with a man. Listen, <laughs> with a temper like on this date, right? Is a wrap. They're like man, half. Give me half. There's hiding someone. I don't think you should hide someone. Mm -hmm. I don't hide. I'll go to restaurants. I'll go to events. Mm -hmm. I'll go to wherever I'm invited. If I'm dating somebody, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're going out. There's a difference between hiding and just being private. Mm -hmm. Being private is I'm not going to promote it like I do my drinks with Laz. Mm -hmm. You know, or I'm not going to promote it like when this episode drops. I'm going to promote that. You've never promoted it? No, I've never promoted it. I've never promoted Just because I've, I, I... I'm just asking. I, I don't you. want... I don't want... Even, even sometimes my own family's opinion. It's something that, you know, you got to be like, all right, you know what? Thank you, but, but enough. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm good. Yeah. If I mess up and I crash and burn on this one, I'm that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just own it. Because mm -hmm. this happened. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people think that men are the only ones that cheat, but women cheat too. Mm -hmm. I've been cheated on. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been dogged out. Yeah. I've been left for somebody else. This happened. Mm -hmm. You know, but do I want to go? That's already hard to deal with. Do I want to deal with that? Well, in on social media well they don't got to know the story oh they'll know the story how they gonna know the story the minute they see that person <laughs> with somebody else mind your business man listen you cannot care listen listen easier said than done because well. sometimes they find out before you do <laughs> oh I yeah i promise you if that happened i will be like left eye rest listen, in peace i will burn i have had out. fans that i'm telling you they're a handful some some, 
I've had some that, you know, God well, you bless. You must be dating folks in these streets, Laz. No, no, no. I'm talking about fans. Oh. I'm talking about fans. Like, they become so invested yes. in you and your life. You know what? I did this. I did a, a, a whole episode with about this with um, Simone I. Smith, LL's wife. Right. And we were talking about how people are so invested. Right. And then all of a sudden, it crash, burn. It's like a soap opera. Right. You well, see, it, it, there's a certain, there's a fine line between invested and creepy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and like when somebody's invested, mm -hmm. I love that because mm -hmm. I know that I have somebody who is ride or die. When I drop mm -hmm. a movie, they're gonna go see it. They're gonna spend their fifteen dollars right. and go see it. That to me, I'll never be able to repay that. That's right. a loyal fan. Yeah. But when they start like, you know, holding something against you, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, you, you didn't do this or you should have done that or you know Oh I, well, you oh, just gotta man. ignore it. Okay. Well I've learned I learned with one incident, just don't read the comments. Yeah, that's another. That's so a good I, one. So I don't read the comments. That's a I good was one. like, for real. But you know what though? Even now, social media, you have to read the comments and engage, because engagement is what I might do a little. Like brands, like yes. brands, uh -huh. when they pick ambassadors to work with, it's not just about how many followers you have. It's your engagement, because mm -hmm. there are people that have four million followers, and when they post something, they only have. 300 because comments. they bought their followers that could be true that could be true but but that's how they pick people as to okay you know what if this person only gets three four hundred comments and they got four million followers they don't have no engagement right. people don't care yeah because you know? they bought their followers so you you have to actually engage your fans like when i drop a drinks with laz I want to know what they're saying. If somebody has a comment, oh, you know, yeah, you Remy's got some, too harsh, you got some faithful. Um, I'll comments. go in and I'll comment. I'll be like, try it with this. You know, or when I made like a peach drink and somebody was like, oh, you know, I went to the store, but the peaches were looking such and such. You know, I went in and I was like, you know, add some agave syrup. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just to like sweeten it up since peaches aren't in season right now. Mm -hmm. And when people realize that you're reading your their comments and responding to them, you get more engagement. Well, I would probably do it for all of 60 seconds. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I you know what, out. though? Fashion is so big. Like, here's one thing, though. So I don't have the uh, amazing O'Kara Banks on payroll mm. styling me on a week-to-week -week basis. But, but my next show, my next mm -hmm. show, when I get them checks flowing yeah, week-to-week, you know him. what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be able him. to afford O'Kara because I heard, you know, word on the street is, you know, your <laughs> price tag is kind of up there, man. I you know, know what? And that brings us to our next question. <laughs> do, do you do you think you would ever produce or direct? And if you decided to take on either or both, what would you prefer the genre be? Okay, so uh, I recently launched a production company. Okay. Um, and right now, I'm actually pitching shows nice. around town. I have a couple of reality shows, yeah. non unscripted, and I have a couple of scripted What's the name shows. of the production company? Uh, Abundancia Pictures. Abundancia yeah, Pictures. Yeah, it means abundance. Uh, it means abundance. Really? Yeah. I'm really excited. Uh, I have a producing partner, Oz Borges, uh, who we met you know, over a project that he wanted me to be involved in, and, mm -hmm. and we decided to collaborate together on the project, and then... You know, we started building it from there. Mm. But yeah, producing is definitely something that, you know, is, is new for me. It's a brand new language for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't realize, you know, how many contacts I had that I was not utilizing. Well, you know how I feel yeah. about it. You I know mean, you know what I said. Yeah, I mean, as an actor, you meet so many people. But you're well-liked, too, and adored. And you're smart as hell. He's a nerd, but he's a cute I'm a nerd. nerd. I'm a nerd. Um, I'm, proud. I'm a proud nerd. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. You need yeah. some nerds in your life. Yeah. Little corny nerds exactly. with some swag. Exactly. You know, they keep you right. <laughs> 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 they get on your nerves, but they keep you right. That's it. I think, you know, I said about almost you two and a half, me to direct. two and a half, three and a years. Yeah. And I don't know where direct. that came from. I was right. like, why are you not directing or using your voice? And you know what, especially with this climate we're in right. and blackness and Afro, Latino and yep. all of it, like every... You have a story. Right. You have so many stories. Yeah. So I was just like, when well, you going to go ahead and do that? You know what? I, I have to. I need to. You need to. Um, it, it's, it's an area that I, I'm very vocal in. Mm -hmm. I've always watched film and watched other directors work and felt, man, I would have never thought of that shot. You know, or like, oh, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I need to go to film school. Like, mm -hmm. I always felt like just do some it. of the creativity I've seen I would have never come up with that, but you never know what you'll come up with until you're there. If I've learned nothing else about this, even with the podcast, because I had three different men 
that I'm very, very, very familiar with, and they have three different types of careers, mm -hmm. type of careers, all professionals, mm -hmm. all I respect, that told me, you should do a podcast. I'm like, nah. Right. But I'm in love with it. It's like, funny. I used to always listen to music in my car. Now, now I listen to podcasts. Yeah. I'm constantly listening to podcasts. Everything and from I did real not. estate investing to script writing to you, you know, like information. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm you know I'm learning. Mm. You know, but even something like this, you know, where you have people from different disciplines, like I can learn from that mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. I just jumped in. I wrote something. I had someone you know set up a little um, a producer uh, came in, gave me a format because I wanted to run like a ship. Right. And then now I have my girl Joyce here. Right, right. Who's Joyce. a very seasoned oh, yeah. to come and take it, you know, to the next level. But what I realized was that I didn't realize my voice um, made people feel so good in a certain kind of way. And I mm -hmm. didn't realize that I was as comfortable sharing my thoughts right. and interviewing and asking questions. Right. But it ended up being dope because I didn't listen to podcasts. Right. Because I get bored very quick. And, and you like, know what, podcast, I mean, style and fashion is part of pop culture. But there's not that many fashion and there aren't. lifestyle podcasts. There aren't. That's why doors were open. Right. So, it's, But I follow know. a lot of fashion Do pages. Do you follow, follow my uh, style lounge on iTunes now? Like? Well, you know what, actually? No. no listen, hold on a second. Mm. It, my car, uh -huh. actually, I can download podcasts to my, directly to my car, mm -hmm. and I looked for it on TuneIn. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find it on TuneIn. So I have to pull it on iTunes, iTunes right, mm -hmm. and then stream it. Yes. So that's how I'm going to have to be able to. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to need you to do this that. This is a little different. I'm going to need yeah. you to do that. Yeah. So okay. I do have a defense. Aside from that, I know you have a couple of ventures outside of acting with Remy Martin and Home Depot. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about the two. So I'm excited about both of them. Uh, I'm a brand ambassador for both. Mm -hmm. uh, for Home Depot, I work with their uh, HBCU programs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a proud graduate of Howard HBCU, University. HBCU, Clark HBCU. Atlanta All right, University. You know what it is. E. So uh, Home Depot, who's headquartered in Atlanta, every year mm -hmm. uh, I go down with a group of other HBCU grads mm -hmm. and we judge uh, these um, proposals that pretty much every HBCU uh, voluntarily uh, sends to Home Depot to win money to enhance their campuses. Nice. So you know you know, it's so important for our schools to look competitive and to look as beautiful as all the mainstream Because it's schools. a private institution. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we but they just statement. don't have the funds. They mm -hmm. may not have the enrollment. A lot of HBCUs are, are very, very small, only hundreds of students. Mm -hmm. um, so having a beautiful campus is something that off the top makes a parent feel good about leaving their children, mm. you know, at now for the rest of their lives, po you know, possibly. I mean, this is the beginning of the rest the of their lives. The first four years of their life. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so Home Depot, Melissa Brown over at Home Depot came up with this, this program mm -hmm. and, uh, Uniworld is mm -hmm. their media partner right. and they brought me in to be one of the, the, you know, ambassadors to help not only judge it, but present the awards to these, uh, colleges and universities that win. Mm -hmm. And most recently, uh, I was down there because they started a brand new thing with black colleges, which is a 72 hour film challenge. Oh, that's dope. And that's in partnership with the African American Film Critics Association, mm -hmm. Gil Robertson. And it's dope because this is this is the dopest part about it. And oh, I was telling these dope. kids, like, look, th you got the opportunity of a lifetime. Like, I wish I would have had this opportunity, opportunity yeah. when I was a kid right. in school. The winner of this 72-hour film challenge, they're going to have their film premiered at the uh, AFCA Awards here in L.A. during Oscar season. Wow, right. so, that's huge. I mean, everybody was in that room last year. Mm -hmm. Everybody, directors, producers, studio execs, actors, You're like, wait everybody. a minute, let me go back to college. So right, I can... <laughs> and so the winner of the 72-hour film challenge is going to have their film presented the there. Platform so that, yeah, that was Yeah, that was super dope. You know, and then with Remy, um, you know, I was, uh, I was selected to be, you know, one of their ambassadors to just kind of educate people on on Remy Martin as a brand, on Remy Martin as a lifestyle. Right. Um, for me, I decided, you know, and they've really given us creative freedom to kind of decide how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, how we do it is up to us. For me, my audience is primarily black women. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to them about drinking Remy and drinking brown liquor, liquids, and I, right, I don't, I'm not a Remy drinker. You see what and I'm saying? I'm not, yeah. Most, I, most women are kind of standoffish to drinking brown and they feel it's tequila. too strong or they feel like it's going to give them a hangover or so what i wanted to do was i want to teach you that brown is okay it's okay to love brown liquor brown 
Just well, accept sure. brown in your life. <laughs> brown is good. Brown is good, honey. Brown is amazing. So, I was never a Remy Martin drinker unless right. it was mixed up properly. My only browns come in tequila or if I get bring something back from a Caribbean country sure. and it's their rum. Like a rum <laughs> yeah. or something like that, there, right? Other than so, that. So, so that's what I want to do. I want to just make drinks that are real simple to make at home. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these mixologists that you see online and stuff, they make these drinks with these elaborate <laughs> ingredients that I'm never going to have. But I, I like buy elaborate them. ingredients. Yeah, but some of the stuff is, you don't even know where to buy them. Like, you oh. can't even go to Whole Foods and get them. Well, like, are they pureeing them? Are they creating them? They just, they, the thing is, is that <laughs> mixologists, they're r the real drink nerds. Like, mm. I'm making, like, simple stuff that you can make at home. Like, mm -hmm. my thing is, is if you can't make it at home, then you're not going to buy it. You're not going to buy it. No, you're bottle. not. No. I want something that's simple. Oh, okay, that, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, or something you can make with your girlfriends when, you know, you're watching Scandal or something like that. That's you know? wine. That's wine. We drink wine. You can drink wine or you can drink Remy. Drink. You know, Remy is a fine champagne cognac. Well, I didn't know that, but um, soon I will get me a bottle. And I'm going to make sure that y'all have bottles. I'm going to make sure that y'all have bottles. I don't believe him. I promise you. I don't believe him. I promise I'm you. waiting for you to make me a drink. You know what? That would have been, been perfect today. It's been like three today. weeks now. If, four. See, if, you it you was definitely what? last year. I slept because <laughs> I, sh I would have brought my ingredients in here today. And, and you would have got busy. And made y'all drinks. Man. Sleeping. He didn't take this important today, but now I'm looking at him, y'all. We might have to do a podcast number two then. Okay, we, we might, can do a podcast number two. We might have to do two. a Remy We day. actually can come to you and do a podcast number two and you make the drinks. Let's do it. Let's I'm get it cracking. All right. Don't act funny. Uh -uh. Answer your phone. I'm not. I All do. right. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to call the brother out here. So, favorite, my water runs out. Your favorite go-to fashions when you're hosting. Laz hosting. When I'm hosting, uh, you mean like club, like club appearances? Oh, club I hosting? didn't think about that, but yeah, sure, club appearances. You know, I like to keep it simple. I like uh, a, a nice, clean, no logo T-shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, some nice, you know, well-fitting jeans, mm -hmm. um, and maybe like you know some cool boots. Mm -hmm. You know, nice That's heel cool. boots. Yeah. You know, because you don't know like the club, what their policies are. Mm -hmm. You know, and all that. Um, and then, you know, I like a t-shirt because it, if it gets hot in the club, like I might wear a sweater or, or mm -hmm. a zip-up jacket. You know, and then I'll be able to take it off and not, you know, because no, no. I get hot quick. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. And then I, I just like, I, I like basic stuff. You know, I don't like like real flashy, glittery. I'm gonna make them a little flashy, y'all. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, just you know, a little. Just see, a little. But you know what though? Like, I, see, that's another thing is. Um, you know, once you get photographed in something flashy, repeat fashion, you know, I'm all about it. That's, that's my new. life. That's new. But you know, I, I, but I it, repeat fashion wasn't true. popping. Well, before. well, if you're smart in this climate, you don't need to be spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on really great conservative pieces that you can wear over. I know we don't like it and I know it's been a thing, but I told Tiffany that. That's Tiffany why, had it. yeah, that's yeah. why she was. But like, she had to make a big deal about the fact that it was well, repeat. Like she it had was, to announce it. It's repeat, so they don't kill her. But that's what I told her. But the crazy part is, is she should have made a big deal about it so that other people can feel comfortable about doing it. And plus, our first lady did it. Well, I didn't know she did it. Yeah, our first lady, Barbara Walters. Mm -hmm. It's a ton of people Listen, that's reborn their passion. If I like something, I'm gonna wear it again. Well, you should. You know, but when it's super, super flashy and it gets a lot of, cause like when it's fly. It's going to get a lot of, you know. And then when you feel like you want to wear it again, be like, repeat. I usually wear it like in my personal life. Like I wear mm -hmm. it to like a game or something. Yeah. Or, you know. And then they're going to get you uh, while you're on the floor or something. There you go. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> what's your go-to red carpet fashion? I like my like, you know, Armani suits or tuxes. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like uh, out of all the other designers, I feel like they've mastered the athletic build. For you. For me. Okay. For me. Um, you know, like I know, I know my body type, mm -hmm. you know, I have a short torso, long legs, mm -hmm. you know, so I need something that's going to complement that. It's mm -hmm. a very classic kind of look. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I rock my tuxes, um, you know, certain, certain suits elongate me mm -hmm. and Armani does that, mm -hmm. you know. Armani's good. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. Laz on a date. What, what do you normally wear? Um. What's your favorite go-to? On a date. <laughs> I'm like, you don't care. Nah, it's not that I don't care. It really, I mean, you know, dates for me are usually just, you know, dinner. Um, cause I want to talk. On mm -hmm. a date, I want to get to know the person, mm -hmm. you know, or or catch up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it'll it'll mo most likely be something comfortable, you mm -hmm. know. Um, either some type, you know, a, a jean that, that I'm comfortable in. Um, yeah. 
I'm, I'm pretty simple. People? Yeah, I'm pretty simple. So, Jim Laz. Yeah. Uh, long basketball shorts. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't believe in them. <laughs> you know, a lot of guys now they're rocking the tights with nothing yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, he was like, that's too much. Nah, I don't want to know if you I that wear well. tight, Yeah, if I wear tights, I'm wearing shorts over it. Like, right. You know, I just, I don't need to announce that, you know. <laughs> and, you know, everybody's like, you know, Eggplant Friday, and they love the you gray know what? sweats with no you, you don't want to um... It's like, a lot of people do you anything for You may actually get an underwear campaign, like, uh, what I, what's that boy name? Listen, <laughs> I can have a lot more followers. If if I did a lot of the thirsty, I could have a lot more thing. followers too. If, if I did pe- the thirsty if thing, if you turned around, you'd have a lot Shut more followers. Up. <laughs> you'd have a lot. You would clean Look. house. If you turned around, can I make you laugh? Look, turn if you turned around, you okay. would have more followers oh, than ninety percent of the women out there right now. Look, can you'd I? You'd be in the millions. Stop, Laz. Look, straight up. Can I make you? I'm a. I have. I'm a if sure. you did your podcast standing up, and they had one extra camera. Reverse view, <laughs> filming this way. Here we go. Let me tell you something. <laughs> no, don't. This will be a top. This will be a trending topic. Look, <laughs> I can't. Why when I first was in LA, I can't stand both of you. My producer is not supposed to be laughing right now. Because so she knows. She knows. <laughs> Look, it's so sorry. Hey, listen. Well, you know, you know. <laughs> Look, listen. It would be rappers banging down this door yeah. trying to get interviews well, with O'Kara Banks in the style lounge. Look, I had someone who was like, yo, oh, if you want to sell your clothes, this is what you should do. I was like, you don't tell me to go and be a thirst trap. Man, listen. I got Felicia Rashad running through my bones. Man, listen. <laughs> Say it. O'Kara o- designs these like, I don't know what you call them, but they're like onesie type, moo like. As a matter of fact, I have like something a onesie, for you. Uh, it's like a onesie, but it's almost like pajamas that you can but wear out. But it's dope, right. though. O'Kara, do, do not do you bet. O- you can see <laughs> O'Kara's body through that, and it's like five sizes <laughs> too, big. too big. And it's like, yo, word is bomb. He will never forget that yeah, image, no, you guys. No, 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 ever. I'll never forget that. <laughs> he was like, who's never, that? Oh my god, <laughs> stop. My lord, look, okay. Oh, on Make, that note. <laughs> I have a gift for you, yes. man. From OTG Essentials yes. for Men. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, see? Is this a onesie? That is not the onesie. Oh, okay. I'll okay. make sure you get a onesie. Yeah, a lot of dope. people like that onesie. The onesie's dope. I know. The onesie, the onesie is, is super dope. The onesie's going to be very expensive. And you, and you know what? The, another thing, too, is, is you know, like, the onesie is, like, it's so loose-fitting. But it's very baggy. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's perfect right. for, like, It just you know, frame. I think it's just the way it frames it. It's one of my most comfortable pieces, so mm-hmm. I just throw it on. Like, that would be dope to, like, like fly in, like, when you're flying mm-hmm. cross-country. Because I like to... I like to always wear sweats when I fly. Well, that's the whole thing. It's comfortable. Yeah. But to me, sweats are, are adult pajamas. Yeah. That's what sweats are. You know I promote comfort on the Go Essentials. There you go. Style Lounge, get comfortable. I'm with it's it. It's all about fly, sexy, and comfort. Y'all make sure y'all check out uh, OTG Essentials. OTG Essentials. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll show you how to wear that. What do you call that. it? Do you have a name for it? OTG Essentials. No, I mean like the, the onesie. It's not called a onesie, right? No, it's a flight. Flight suit. Okay, flight suit. Flight yeah, jumper, okay, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah so. so one more thing. Chilling at home, Laz. Yeah, chilling at home, Laz. Man, I'm usually in like boxers mm-hmm. and, you know, a, t- mm-hmm. a, a V-neck, you know, Hanes, mm-hmm. ultra soft comfort t-shirt. Mm-hmm. You, know? you just keep it real. Yeah, like or, or, sh- or shorts. Drinking a Pepsi. <laughs> I just thought about that. I don't know nah, because I'm on that then. alkaline water. I'm okay. on that alkaline water. Hard. So he drinks nothing carbonated. That's that. No, Unless I, it's I, I drink carbonated. I mm-hmm. try to drink soda water. Like I'm trying to keep my sugars down. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to drink a lot more water. This Me year. too. Me too. You know, like I just realized I just do not drink. I enough have water. not drank enough water. Yeah, my lips will be just dry like they are now. Right, and, and it, it hit me when I'm on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, you know how that cold hits you and you dry out yep. like that? And you are forced to drink water. You're yeah. forced to drink Here, water, right. It's a fake illusion. You get right. tricked and you realize you only had a, like a half of a bottle Exactly, because you're glowing because mm-hmm. you're in the sun, mm-hmm. but it's like, no, I'm dehydrated. And you think Very. you're hungry, but you're really thirsty. Exactly. Yeah. And that's good. Okay, so before you go, mm-hmm. what do you have going on next? And for those who don't already know, where can we find you on social media? Okay, so I'll start off with social media. Okay. Uh, I'm at at Laz Official. So everything is Laz Official. Mm-hmm. My Facebook, my Instagram, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, Snapchat, everything is Laz Official. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I have going on next is I'm going to start promoting uh, my next film that comes out in April, April 27th, called Traffic. Traffic. It stars um, Paula Patton, mm-hmm. Omar, um, why do I want to call him Omar? Epps. 
Yeah, Omar Epps. Mm-hmm. I was gonna call him Omar Benson Miller because oh. I was just listening to his podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Omar Epps, um, uh, Rosalind Sanchez, mm-hmm. and myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a thriller. It's a thriller? It's a thriller with a message. Well, I'm going. But it's a dope-ass thriller. Like, is it? It's so you're excited the, about it. Oh, I'm so excited when about it. When do you start it. press? Uh, we start in February. Oh, see, yeah, there we go. Out, comes, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I should see an upgrade. I already know. I already upgrade. know. I'll look better for three months, and then I'll look back to my Then he's going to look regular. Last, we'll see if he's re- nice to me. Last. Let's see. Basic last again. <laughs> After April, I'll be basic last You again. won't be basic. You're never basic. Um, But yeah, so I have that, Um, you know, pitching. Uh, shows right now, so mm-hmm. hopefully I'll be able to announce a sale. Right. You know, next time we do this. Yeah, you will. Um, and what else do I have going on? Oh, uh, and Detroit is nominated for Best Ensemble Cast. Yes. Nice. For the Image I saw Awards. Detroit. I support. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. So you know, hopefully Monday, you know, we'll we'll come see out what with happens. A victory. That'll be if we win. That'll be my second Image Award. Mm-hmm. Yay. Um. So you know, we'll see. Just excited. The good things. Yeah. Twenty eighteen yeah. Street United. Yeah. So far, so good. No complaints. listen to your spirit take time to be still I want to say thank you for hanging out with me in the style lounge last thank you for having me this was fun yeah I know not to tell you nothing anymore either after this (laughs) can't do nothing around him you don't have to tell me nothing girl just turn around (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you a lap dance later thank you for having me one We made it easy for you to find us. Follow us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Style Lounge Podcast. Search for Style Lounge. The Style Lounge is executive produced by K.O. Banks Productions and is recorded at Rick D's Entertainment Studios in Burbank, California. Michael Motion is our engineer and editor. Music for the show is produced by Eric Dawkins for E-Flat Music Group. Peace, blessing, and light. <laughs>